Hello everyone, this is Alice at Welding and today I'm talking to Clarcha Quirines, who is the director of a new documentary called Your Mum and Dad. So it's a documentary about overcoming family grief and trauma and about the impact of intergenerational trauma, so how things get passed down from parents to children. Um, so hi Clarcha, thank you so much for joining me. Well, thank you so much for having me. And um, so your film was, if I understand correctly, initially an exploration of someone else's experience of therapy. So what made you turn the camera on yourself and your own family? And I got a uh, diagnosis of uh, precancerous cells in my breast. And, um, and I, you know, I was really touched in a, in a existential way and started to have these really weird dreams. And, you know, and then you start to think about your own youth and who you are and, you know, um, and when I had an operation actually in New York, I started to write a diary that I later, um, you know, shared with my editor and he said, well, this is the film, you know, you really have to turn the camera on to you. And I was very reluctant because I really did everything to avoid it, basically. And to uh, every time I would say to him, you know, I know I'm going to interview my mother, but I didn't do it because it was so painful. You know how you I mean, it's a it's a very human intuition not to go to the areas that are really very painful, you know, you want to do everything to avoid it, basically. So I wasn't any different, but every time I forced myself to do it. And um, so what did you learn about yourself through that, throughout that process then? Every time I see the film, I'm learning something new about myself. That sounds weird, but that is really the effect of the therapist. You know, every time I think, oh, I never thought about this, you know, that why, why did I do all these risky things uh, in my work? Why would I... You know, why did I get so excited to go to Kosovo with a bunch of gun runners? Uh, you know, and then he really made a connection between what happens with the child of my parents, the death, and me. And so, you know, I so every time I see something different in the film. So it's not, I think it's it's an ongoing um. Uh, process basically and that's probably what therapy is yeah for sure because this um moment you're speaking about with your mother is very moving there's a moment where she refuses to speak about the death of your sister in front of your daughters her granddaughters and I wondered about the impact thinking about it now what impact do you think that silence had on your family and then what impact has it had now that you're able to talk about it better? Um, I think it had, of course, a, a tremendous influence on me and on who I am and the work I do um, and, and who I am. And, but I, but, but, I also think, you know, making this film, I always thought it's a very risky thing because am I making it worse for my mother or will I make it more bearable? I think, you know, you never know if it is positive for my mother. But uh, uh, the thing is that after the film was, you know, um, was screened in the theaters in the Netherlands, my parents would, you know, I would go out for lunch together with my parents, which was quite unique in itself because I never, you know, I don't see them that often together. <laughs> And then we really, we talked about it. We talked about what happened that day. Um, you know, um, we, uh, yeah, I mean, both of them without crying could talk for, you know, 45 minutes about that day. And I think, and that is really what it did. It became more normal to talk about it. So it became something 
you know, that's part of us instead of something that was very scary and that was something that we needed to keep outside our lives. So in that sense, I think it's it's very positive. And um, obviously the film as well is about intergenerational trauma, the effect of parenting. And I wondered about, you know, what, what were the hardest things you had to confront about your own experience as a parent with your with your teenagers? Um, well, it, it it's funny because I was, you know, this question came up during another uh, interview and I asked my daughter, you know, what, how did you experience it? Or what do you, you know, what did you get out of this? And, um, and she said, well, you know, I, I, I learned something you know about about you and, and and your family but but then she said something so sweet she said i you know it makes me understand you a little bit better and um i didn't ask what parts of it but i but i do think that sometimes you know i am sometimes not very um you know how would you say that like patience with small things and although of course you need to do that because that's also parenthood you know but I was so um I grew up with you know the notion that um you know you could never really complain because there was always something else that was far more dramatic or you know so um I mean, not that I had suppressed my feelings because, you know, when I was really sad because of love or, you know, my mother would be always there. But I um, think sometimes it's, you know, yeah, um, it's hard to really um, to sometimes have empathy for things that I think that are not so dramatic. That's maybe what I want to say. That makes sense. And um, have you had your own therapy experience? Yes, yes, I did when I was in my, you know, late twenties. I would say um, I always, whenever I had a boyfriend, I always got extremely bad eczema. So uh, uh, you know, really, really bad. And so I went into therapy for that for, I don't know, a year or two years or so. And I think it did help me, although, you know, maybe I wasn't really ready uh, at that time. So now I'm more open for it, you know, and you also want to look critically at yourself and really think, OK, what is it that I can do better in terms of, you know, maybe being a better parent or maybe being uh, a better partner or, you know, a daughter or whatever or friend. For sure, because that's the other side of therapy, isn't it? So there's, you know, coming to peace with things that have happened, but there's also self-development. Yeah. And um, the stories are kind of in the film. They're so unique, as, as it always feels when you hear someone's first person experience. But you're also left with the feeling that they're everyone's story, really. You know, we can all resonate with what it means to be part of a family and all of the kind of joy and pain that can cause and um I was wondering what what was the message you were trying to convey to viewers uh well I think the most impor important thing for me is you know although I'm I'm always very attracted to very dramatic stories I would say um I think the most important thing is that that there is always hope you know, you, you need to have a feeling of hope. And I think, I mean, I wasn't looking for it in this film, but I think that is really what it gave me that, you know, there's always hope because you're the only one who is really able to, um, to change yourself or to, uh, you know, to, to, to deal with grief or to, and although, you know, it's very hard because I think the grief of my mother is, is to such an extent that she's only now, oh yeah. So that's also another effect of the, of the film. She's for the first time in her life in therapy, 
So she's 83, but she's seeing a therapist. So I think that, that is hope, isn't it? That even when you're 83, you're not too old to go in therapy and to do something about, you know, yourself and to improve, hopefully, your life. Thank you so much, Gladja. That was really wonderful to speak to you. Well, very nice to talk to you. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Okay. Bye.